Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be in our next theme, theme three. We're going to be talking about DNA. DNA is in the category of macromolecules called nucleic acids. Don't forget we have lipids, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and protein. But today we're going to be focusing on nucleic acids because DNA is actually called deoxyribonucleic acid. Okay, all types of macromolecules have their specific type of building block, building blocks called monomers. The specific type of building block or monomer for DNA is called a nucleotide. This is not that hard to remember because nucleotide sounds a lot like nucleic acid. So all DNA is made up of these building blocks. Think about them like the Legos that make up the DNA. Now, actually, a nucleotide is even more detailed than that. So let's learn about the parts that make up a nucleotide now. There are actually three different components that make up these major Lego building blocks for DNA. The first is each of the nucleotides must have a nitrogen base. Each of them has a 5-carbon sugar and a phosphate group. Oh, yeah, that phosphate group's coming back again. So we have to remember all three. Usually students remember all three by pausing here and drawing a visual. So I would actually draw our phosphate. Again, it's circular. The sugar actually usually looks like that pentagon, all right? That five carbons, those are the, each of the corners here. And then we have a nitrogen base. We're going to learn a lot about the nitrogen base. But think about these all combining to make one of the Lego building blocks that will all combine to make that big structure we know as DNA. But you have to know these three major parts of the nucleotide first. Okay, so make sure you did that drawing. Now, the nitrogen base part of the nucleotide is really interesting, and it varies depending on which Lego type we're looking at. So some of the Legos will have the base be an adenine. Some of the Legos will have the nitrogen base be a cytosine. Some of the Legos will have the base be a guanine. And some of them will have the base be a thymine. Now these are kind of long words. I know they all end in the same sound, but we usually abbreviate them by their first letter A, C, G, and T. All right, and again, these are the nitrogen bases. The nitrogen base is just this piece here. So when we think about the Lego building blocks, we can substitute out this green piece here for four different things, right? This one, that one, this one, or that one. So there's four major types of those Legos depending on which base is sitting there. Now, the bigger structure of DNA, right, we have the DNA building blocks connecting to one another. When they're connecting, the sugars and the phosphates are going to be like on the outside, which we call the backbone. Notice our phosphates again, like normal, are drawn as these circles, just like for ATP. Again, we said our sugars are usually these pentagon shapes. We alternate sugars and phosphates along this outside part. I actually suggest students draw this like a ladder, okay? I would maybe even draw this actual visual where these are the different steps on the ladder. And the steps are not these sugars and the phosphates. The steps are those nitrogen bases. And again, how many different types of nitrogen bases were there? There are four, A's and T's and C's and G's. One, two, three, four. So we have four different types of those Lego blocks. What I suggest you do is go back and circle, circle one of the whole setups a nitrogen base, a sugar, and a phosphate. Again, we call that whole component here that has a base, a sugar, and a phosphate a nucleotide. But they combine, right? They have one side of the ladder connected to the other side of the ladder. All right, but we're not used to seeing it as this kind of flat ladder shape. We're used to seeing it kind of twisted, right? Well, that twisted side, don't forget to label everything in your picture again. That twisted shape we're used to seeing is the double helix, the twisted ladder. But this is just a simplified picture because now we know this ribbon-like stuff 
is this backbone, what is it made of? Sugars and phosphates. And what are these letters on the inside? They are the nitrogen bases. How many types do we have? Four. A's, T's, C's, and G's. But I don't know about you, I'm beginning to notice that A always likes to be connected with something in particular. I don't know about you, are you noticing a pattern? All right, let's keep going. Those patterns are called the base pairing rules. Base pairing rules. Some of those nitrogen bases like to be with other ones a lot more than each other. These you have to memorize. They are called complementary bases. Complementary, kind of like the complementary color wheel. Some things go better together. Like we know that green goes pretty well with red, which is one of the reasons why they're Christmas colors. They look really good together. Here are the rules. A always bonds with T. G always bonds with C. You have to have that memorized. And throughout all the pictures we've looked at today, actually, that is what has been happening. So to help you memorize these rules, here is a tool. A always goes with T. C always goes with G. That's a way to remember. Okay, again, we have the little old lady really telling us we just have to memorize this or else. But here's a really easy way to remember. Apples are in the tree and cars are in the garage. A goes with T, C goes with G. You have to remember. So again, we can see this in a picture. So this is our untwisted ladder. We know this outside part, we have sugars and phosphates alternating. And on the inside of the ladder, we have A and T next to each other. But there seems to be this dotted line. All right, this dotted line. Well, what's actually holding these two halves of the ladder together? Well, interestingly enough, that's a weak bond that we've learned about. Not covalent, not ionic. It's a hydrogen bond, just like we learned with water. So the thing holding the A part with the T is a hydrogen bond. And this is really good because we want that to be a bond, but we don't want it to be super strong. Now there's well, it's a lot of terms we've already learned that describe DNA, and let's make sure we're on the same page about them all. And we're going to add another one to the list. We've learned chromosomes. Chromosomes look like very tightly coiled pieces. Sometimes they're X's, sometimes they're half an X, half of a butterfly wing, but we know they're visible and they're tightly coiled. What was the unwound version that's not visible? that we learned about in mitosis. Ah, chromatin. Chromatin is thin. It's too thin and stringy. It's not easy to see. Well, let's add another one to this list, okay? A gene. A gene is actually even smaller. A gene is a segment of DNA, a segment of T's, A's, C's, and G's that is eventually going to make a protein. Our whole theme is going to be about genetics and proteins and what happens if we have the wrong genetics and make the wrong protein. So we're going to be talking about genes a whole lot in this quarter. It's going to be rather exciting. But why do we care about this? What's the whole role of DNA in an organism? Well, those sequences that that alignment of A's, T's, C's, and G's, that's our genetic information we've been talking about. All organisms have those same four bases, A, T, C, and G. The difference is how many they have and their order. So no matter if you are a bacteria, you have A's, T's, C's, and G's, and you have DNA, or you're a platypus, the difference is maybe in a section that they both have, where there's a T, this guy might have a C. And that would make some of the differences we see between these two different types of organisms pretty cool. All right, guys, you made it. Good job.